Paula Fox, Newberry Medal winner. Paula Fox was born in New York City on April 22, 1923. Fox spent her childhood moving from place to place and school to school. Her father, Paul Fox, earned a living by rewriting plays by other authors, as well as writing several of his own. And later he went to Hollywood and England to work for film studios. While her self-absorbed parents were traveling about, Fox was sent to live with L. Wood Corning, a congressional minister who took the baby girl into the home he shared with his invalid mother in New York's Hudson Valley. An avid reader, poet, and history buff, her beloved Uncle L. Wood had a profound influence on Fox. The Reverend Corning taught her to read and to appreciate the works of authors like Rudyard Kipling, Eugene Field, Mark Twain, Washington Irvin, and Walt Whitman. He also told her tales of the Revolutionary War and other events in history. All these stories inevitably rubbed off on the young fox. When she was five, she had her first experience of being a ghost writer. It was this experience that first inspired Fox to become a writer. In 1931, she relocated another great distance, this time to live with her grandmother on a sugar plantation in Cuba. Here, Fox quickly picked up Spanish from her fellow students while attending classes in a one-room schoolhouse. Three years after her arrival, the revolution led by Bautista and Saldivar forced Fox to return to New York City. By this time, she had attended nine schools and had hardly seen her parents. Fortunately, she found some stability in her life by visiting public libraries. Reading was everything to her. Wherever she went, except in Cuba, there was a library. Even though her schools changed, she'd always find a library. Later, she returned to the United States, married, and had children, but the marriage ended in divorce. Afterwards, Fox resolved to finish her education and attended Columbia University for four years until she could no longer afford the expense and had to leave before receiving her degree. Fox's knowledge of Spanish now helped her find a job as an English teacher for Spanish-speaking children. She also found other teaching positions, including one as a teacher for the emotional dis emotionally disturbed. In 1962, Fox married an English professor and moved to Greece for six months while her husband wrote on a Guggenheim Fellowship. It was during her trip to Greece that Fox finally began to realize her dream of becoming a writer. For Fox, the same reason for reading books applies to her desire to write them. Books help both reader and writer to experience and understand, if not necessarily sympathize with, the lives of other people. Fox's juvenile novels have a complexity and sincerity that make them popular with readers and critics alike. These books cover a wide range of subjects including parental conflict, alcoholism, and death. Frequently, her young protagonists are emotionally withdrawn children who undertake a journey that is symbolic of their emotional development. Maurice's Room, Paula Fox's first children's book written in 1966. It is about an eight-year-old boy named Maurice who struggles to protect his bedroom full of treasured junk from his unsympathetic parents. Then later undergoes a transformation when the family moves to the country. Poor George, written in 1967, gives us George Mecklin, a restless soft-spoken teacher at a private school in Manhattan depressed by his life of vague moral purpose. George discovers a local adolescent named Ernest breaking into his house. Rather than hand the boy over to the police as his nagging wife insists, George instead decides to tutor him and his life consequently implodes. A Likely Place 1967. A little boy who can't spell or even seem to please his parents spends a week 
with his cookie babysitter and makes a special friend. How many miles to Babylon? 1967. Ten-year-old James, dotted on by his three aunts, is haunted by the loss of his mother. He doesn't know where his mother is, only that she is sick and that he has to live with his aunts in a shooty city apartment. One day, he skips school to go to his secret place, a deserted house. What follows is a roller coaster like adventure story right through the streets of New York City. The Stone Faced Boy, 1968. The story of a boy who hides behind a straight face. Only a strange great aunt seems to understand the thoughts of this boy who has spent his life concealing his emotions. Portrait of Ivan, 1969. The King's Falcon, 1969. Blowfish Live in the Sea, 1970. Nineteen-year-old Ben travels from New York to Boston to see his estranged alcoholic father after a 12-year absence. Because of a past trauma involving a lie his father told him, Ben has withdrawn himself to the point where he no longer speaks to anyone. His sister Carrie is the only family member who tries to reach out to Ben. This novel won the National Book Award finalist in children's book category. Good Ethan, 1973. The Slave Dancer, which won the 1974 Newbery Medal Award. It is a story of a New Orleans boy who is kidnapped and placed on a slave ship bound for West Africa. The boy, Jesse Boiler, is chosen for his ability to play the fib. His task aboard ship is to dance the slaves so they can exercise their cramped limbs. Eventually, Jesse escapes when the ship's crew is drowned in a storm, but he is forever scared by his experience. The Little Swineherd and Other Tales, 1978 One-Eyed Cat, 1984, a Newbery Honor Book is one of Fox's finest literary achievements. The title refers to a stray cat which the main character, Ned, accidentally injures with an air rifle. The guilt Ned feels afterwards plagues him through most of the book, even making him physically ill at one point. The Moonlight Man, 1986 Lily and the Lost Boy, 1987 the Village by the Sea, 1988. Emma is sent to live with her uncle and her neurotic, alcoholic aunt for two weeks when her father has gone to the hospital for heart surgery. Unable to cope with her hateful aunt and troubled about her father's health, Emma finds some solace in creating a make-believe village on the beach. Monkey Island, 1991. The story concerns an 11-year-old middle-class boy named Clay Garrity whose father loses his job as a magazine art director and abandons his family. Because his mother is eight months pregnant and cannot work, Clay fears the social services department will take him away and put him in foster home. The novel individualizes the problems of homeless people and puts faces on those whom society has made faceless. The Eagle Kite, 1995. Lim's father is dying of AIDS. His mother tells him a recent blood transfusion is to blame. But Lim knows she's lying, because his ex-education class has taught him about the improved safety of transfusions, and more importantly, because of an elusive scrape of memory. Soon, that memory surfaced several years ago. He had glimpsed in his father embracing a man on the beach. Lim's anger at his family's refusal to be honest with him, as well as the shame and betrayal he feels over his father's homosexual affair, Radiance Descending, 1997. The story of an adolescent boy struggling with his resentment towards a younger brother who has Down syndrome. Having just moved to Long Island from New York City, Paul is eager to avoid Jacob, who nevertheless idolizes him. Paul is also frustrated at how Jacob manipulates all their parents' attention. Slowly, however, Paul comes to realize 
that the mere fact of avoiding Jacob is still focusing on him, and that there may be a middle ground. Fox is a recent inductee into the New York State Writers Hall of Fame. She also has written a new book, News from the World. The new book is dedicated to two writers she befriended as a young adult, Mary King and Pat O'Donnell.